Welcome back. I'm glad to see you. I'm Miss Latimer um, with the EEI program and I'm really excited about this one. All the lessons we've been doing so far have kind of been leading up to this. We've talked about how much water is on our planet, how only less than 1% is available fresh water we can use. We've talked about the water cycle, the urban water cycle, where we find fresh water like in wetlands and aquifers, why we have to save it. And finally, we get to talk about how our actions impact that water. All right, so today I have on our chart up here of the Andrews and the Brewers families. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how we use water and kind of talk about some more ways we can save water. If you've read our coloring book, okay, there is a PDF um, below on our webpage that you can download inside. There are a few different ways to save water. Um, we want to see you guys sharing water, uh, saving ideas, all those things. But what we're going to look at is how these two families use water and the difference it makes in their water. Now, again, this is a model, so this is not um, what it looks like, right, when we're really using water. But we have the Andrews and the Brewers family. Each of these buckets have some water in them. Those are going to be their lakes. And um, I have some cards for each family that I'm going to read. And depending on what the card says, we're going to take out water and put it into the wastewater treatment plant. That's going to be this empty bucket right here. All right. And so the first thing that we need to know is how much water do each of these families have? If you remember, we talked a little bit about lake levels. In Texas, we're very prone to drought, so our lake levels tend to go down when we have a lot of evaporation going on, right? When we get rain, maybe they come back up, maybe they are staying level. We monitor those things constantly. So the first thing we need to do for our two families is figure out their lake levels. So we're gonna measure in centimeters. In each of these buckets, I have a ruler. So I'm gonna put the zero side of the centimeters down at the bottom. This bucket, the Andrews family bucket, is gonna be on my left. That bucket is 13 centimeters. Now the Brewers, let's see here, how much their lake has. Oh, almost the same, it's a little bit more. Their lake has 13.5 centimeters. So this is their initial lake level. Before we make any changes, this is the first lake level. So I'm gonna leave those rulers in there and kind of move them to the side so they're not in the way because we're gonna have to measure again in a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read these cards. We're gonna take the water out for each card. So for example, we'll start with this one. Anne's mom in the Andrews family asked her to wash her hands before dinner. As Anne washed her hands, she turned the water off to scrub her hands. We've talked about that one before, right? Half a cup of water. So I'm gonna take the half cup, I'm gonna take it out of the Andrews bucket, I'm gonna put it into this empty bucket right here where it will go to the wastewater treatment plant. Now for the brewers, Oh, Bob washed his hands after riding his dirt bike. I imagine he's pretty dirty. He left the water running while he scrubbed his hands. Oh, one cup of water. So the only difference was that Anne turned off the water when she scrubbed her hands and Bob didn't. All right, there we go. We're gonna keep going. Mrs. Andrews is going to take a five minute shower instead of bath. Remember, when you're in the shower, you can be using up to 10 gallons a minute. So five minutes, that could be up to 50 gallons. It makes a huge impact. When we stay in the shower for like 30 minutes, right? So if we take short showers, we're saving a lot of water. So Mrs. Andrews, her five minute shower, we're gonna do one cup of water. So I'm gonna get the big one. And the Brewers, let's see. Oh, Mrs. Brewer leaves the water running while brushing her teeth. Do you remember how much water that wastes? It's about five gallons every time or 10 gallons a day, right? So if you leave that water on instead of turning it off because we're not even using it, we can save that water instead. But Mrs. Brewer did not do that. She left it on. So we're gonna take out one cup of water for her leaving the water on. All right, Andrews family. Ooh, Mrs. Andrews will water her garden in the morning before 10 a.m. Now, why do you think she's watering so early? the sun. When we talk about that water cycle, if the sun's out and you're watering, what's going to happen to that water? It's going to evaporate. So you're actually, it's a city ordinance. You're supposed to water in the evening or in the morning so that you can keep that water and it goes to the plants where you're trying to get it. Um, she still has to water though, so we're going to say one cup of water. 
That's one we haven't talked about yet. Our gardens. We know they need water, but what can we do when we're in the garden, right? All right. Mr. Brewer planted flowers too. Now he planted flowers that had to be watered almost every day. So I told you guys I just redid my garden when we were talking about the second grade lesson or the urban water cycle lesson. And um, my hands were filthy, right? But more than that, all of the plants I just planted outside of my house, I went to um, the experts and I asked some questions. I looked it up online. I planted all native plants. Instead of planting plants that require tons and tons of water, I looked up plants from Texas that don't need that much water so that once I get them in the ground and they're happy, I don't have to water them every single day. All right, so Mr. Brewer might need to learn about native plants, right? So I'm gonna put two cups because his plants, they have to be watered almost every day. All right, there's our second. All right, next Brewer or Andrews? We're on the Andrews, all right. This one's really cool. Mrs. Andrews is redeeming a voucher for a new toilet from the new throne for your home program in Dallas. This is gonna get her a new high efficiency toilet which uses less water. So, really cool thing you can do is look up your city and see if there are programs that help you save water. Some cities will do a water audit and check your house for leaks. Some cities, like Dallas, will do new toilets. If you have an older home, you can get a new toilet at no cost to you. And what's really cool, switching your toilet did not cost Mrs. Andrews any water. It is zero cups of water because all she's doing is putting that new technology in her house and taking advantage of the program that her city offers. All right, good job, Miss Andrews. What's happening in the Brewer house? Oh, so Bob Brewer killed a spider and then he flushed it down the toilet. So, if you flush things like trash down the toilet, you're using a lot of water. We talked about the, the Andrews family. Their new toilet is a high efficiency toilet. It uses less water. Depending on the type of toilet you have, they can use a lot of water, like five to eight gallons of water every single time they flush, or newer toilets to be used between one and two gallons. Makes a big difference, all right? So throwing trash down the toilet, like killing a spider and then flushing it, Trash guys should go in the trash can. And that way, oh, we didn't look how much water. One cup. All right, so he's gonna flush trash down there. We don't wanna do that. We don't wanna waste water to flush trash. We wanna use that for what it's meant for, right? All right, are we ready? Andrews. Ooh, Mrs. Andrews asks Ann to turn on the dishwasher only if it's full. Why would she run it only if it's full? To save water. Okay, when you run a dishwasher with just a few dishes, does it know it? Okay, you have to look at your dishwasher and make sure you fill it up so that as it does its cycle, it cleans all those dishes instead of having to do it multiple times. All right, so Andrews, they did run their dishwasher, so that's one cup of water. And the Brewer's family, so Bob's mom asked him to wash his baseball uniform and his clothes. Um, he put his baseball uniform in the washing machine and didn't put any other clothes in there. So then he had to run it again to wash the rest of his clothes. So we're going to put two cups for the brewers. And again, another cool thing that has come out. People just like you guys are seeing problems like this all over and coming up with solutions. So a really cool thing, I actually have a washing machine and depending on how many clothes I have, it has sensors inside and it only uses the amount of water it needs. So what's really cool is you can look up what you have and make sure you use it the best way to save water. If you have an older machine that doesn't do that, then make sure it's full. If you have a newer one, then you can make sure that you put just the right amount so that you're not gonna be wasting that water. All right, I really like this one. Um, it says, before the Andrews family leaves for a movie, Mr. Andrews checks the water meter. If you've never seen your water meter, usually it's a circle and it shows how much water is being used at your house. What's really cool is if you take a picture of it with your phone and then your whole family is out, should it move at all? It shouldn't, okay? If you come back and you check it and it has moved, that tells you that maybe you have a leak and you can find that leak and fix it so that it doesn't waste water. Um, zero cups of water. Does not take any water to check for a leak. Oh, speaking of leaks, 
In the brewer's house, Bob knows that his sink faucet drips, but keeps forgetting to ask his dad to help him fix it. Half a cup of water. Leaks can waste a lot of water if we don't get them repaired. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. We've got a few more cards to go. Andrews. Ah, one of the things we use water for, especially in Texas, a lot is to cool down, right? It gets really hot in the summer. So this one says, Anne and her friends played in the sprinkler while the grass was being watered Saturday morning. So you're using it to water the grass and to play. That's a good idea. All right, so the Andrews family, they did use the sprinkler, so we're going to put one cup. Well, let's see what's happening at the brewer house over here. All right, the brewer's house, Bob fills a plastic swimming pool all the way up to the top for his cousin and he to play in. Hmm. Now, that's not bad, right? Or is it? Should they fill it all the way up to the top? What's going to happen? If you fill up your swimming pool all the way up to the top and you get in, what's going to happen? All of that water is going to go over this edge, right? Your body takes up space. It displaces that water. It moves it. So he should have just filled it up maybe halfway. But... He did not, he did not know. So we're gonna put two and a half cups of water. All right, one, two and a half. All right, that was the brewers. Back to the Andrews house. Ah, Mr. Andrews installed a low flow shower head. Remember, we talked about showers. They can use a lot of water. We've also talked about new technology, like newer toilets or washing machines. You can do the same thing with your shower head. You can change your shower head in your shower so it uses less gallons per minute. So Mr. Andrews installed a low flow shower head. So now their showers take less time. We're gonna put half a cup of water. And then the brewers. Mr. Brewer blew his nose. Oh, and then he threw the tissue in the toilet and flushed it. Again, the toilet is definitely not a trash can. We want to make sure we're not wasting water just to throw away trash, right? All right, Andrews. Mr. Andrews replaces his three quarter inch diameter water hose with a half inch water hose. So he got a smaller water hose. Okay, so it has less water that can come out at a time, but it comes out really fast. That makes sense. You know, we gotta water the garden sometimes. So we're gonna put one cup of water in there for that. And then back to the brewers. Let's see what they did. Oh, Bob washed his mom's car. It's pretty nice. He left the water running while he soaked the car. All right. So if we leave that water running and running and running, that's usually when we find an issue, right? If we leave it running when we wash our hands or we brush our teeth or doing the dishes, anytime we just let the water run and run, we're gonna use way more. So if he turned the water off and maybe had a soapy bucket and then just used it to rinse, that might have been a better option. But Bob didn't realize this. So we have two cups of water because he left that water on. So one and two. All right, one more over here. Ah, see, one of our teachers actually does this at her house. At the Andrews house, Anne catches water from the bathtub in a pitcher while she waits for it to get warm. She uses that water before it gets hot. She catches all that cold water and she uses it to water her plants. That is an excellent idea. That is half a cup of water. Now let's see what's happening in the brewer's house. Mrs. Brewer washes grass clippings and leaves off her driveway by spraying the driveway with a water hose. Is there something we could do besides using water to spray the grass and the, the leaves off our driveway? A broom, right? So instead of using water to get rid of things like that, if you can use a broom, it saves a lot of water. This one says two cups. Her driveway must have been very dirty. Two cups. All right, now those are all of our cards. What do you think happened? Okay, when we look at these two families, when I'm in the classroom, I get a lot of negative comments about the Brewers family. But at the end of the day, I wanna tell you guys something. I did not know that we only had 1% fresh water until I was in college. I didn't know. 
I didn't know that it was so important to save water. It helps our planet, it helps us, it also helps save us money. But until you learn those kinds of things, it's really hard to care and make sure you're taking care of it. So as you learn more of these things and you find more ways to save water, you can help share that information with other people, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure our lakes again. So I'm gonna put it right back in the middle so that Andrews is at nine and a half centimeters. So nine and a half centimeters. The Brewers is at five centimeters. So let's see if we were right. Let's see if the Andrews used more or less. So they used about three and a half centimeters. Let's see how much the Brewers used. All right, so the Andrews used less than half of what the Brewers did. Some of the same things as what they were doing, they also did proactive things like checking their water meter and getting new um, equipment for their house, new technology. Every little bit adds up. When we talk to students and teachers and community members, one of the things we like to say is, if you turn off the water every time you brush your teeth, twice a day, remember that's over 3,000 gallons, 3,650 gallons every year. If you get your whole family to do that, number grows up, right? If you start taking shorter showers, that number goes up. What are you willing to do? What can you do to help make sure we're saving water? Our actions have a big impact on the water that we use every day. We want to make sure everyone saves it, everyone helps take care of that water so that we continue to have it for us, for our plants, for our animals. Hope you guys have enjoyed these videos. I hope you can see how our actions impact the water that we have. If you have any questions, email us, send us a message on Facebook, all right? If you have ideas about other ways to save water, we would love to hear from you. If you've colored pages in our book or done any of our experiments at home, we would love to see those things too. So we'll see you guys soon on our Facebook page and our emails. We look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thank you.